So all right, y'all, welcome to Chris Chris. Today we're gonna be discussing John Witherspoon passing away. We're gonna be discussing a Game of Thrones writer stepping away from Star Wars movies. We're gonna be discussing Solange's controversy over the weekend. And lastly, we're gonna talk about Meek Mill and a fan. So the biggest and saddest news of the weekend, unfortunately, was John Witherspoon passing away. If you don't know who he is off the top of his name, he goes by Pops and Friday. He was also big in the Wayne's Bros show and did a lot of other things and very prominent in black comedy. He's an icon and a legend. We're going to miss him greatly. So John Witherspoon died at age of 77 due to cardiac arrest. So at least he was able to live a long and fulfilling life. But yeah, it still hit me. It hit a lot of people on the internet because like he said, everyone loved Pause. He's the funniest dude. Some of his catchphrases, just how he says things, it's just hilarious. So losing that, it's, it sucks. What's even worse about it was Boondocks was announced to be relaunched in the new HBO app next year. And as you all know, he's grandpa on Boondocks. And without him, please HBO. Please, Boondogs, please, everyone that's a part of that, do not continue without Pops. He has such a distinct voice. He's funny. You know, like I said, his phrases. Without that, it's just not going to be the same, and I don't really want to support or watch it without him. So it's very sad. So I feel like the best way in order to honor Pops or even mourn him, we should be watching his movies or TV shows this week. Just watch something with him involved. Get yourself a good laugh. Also, a very underrated Pops movie to me. You guys remember Soul Plane? Just, just like everything he's a part of, it's hilarious. So, like I said, get your DVDs out or get your fire stick, whatever. Watch a Pops movie this week to honor him. Rest in peace. So when it comes to TV, there is nothing like Game of Thrones. It was the show that was so big, everyone on social media talked about it Sunday nights. But it had a rocky and terrible end because it was rushed. And people think it's rushed because in Dave and Dave, the producers of the show, they were on to new ventures. They had a Netflix project that was worth 200 million. They signed on for the Star Wars trilogy. They just had a lot of things. So people felt like they were ready to move on from Game of Thrones. HBO even offered them to be able to do eight to 10 seasons and they only wanted to do seven. So I let you know, they were done with Game of Thrones. That's why they rushed it and gave it this crappy ending. But karma's a bitch, and fast forward, it turns out they're not going to be doing the next Star Wars trilogy now. They claim that it's because of Netflix, and they are tied with that, and it took longer than expected. But according to me and a lot of people's speculation, we think they were let go. And part of the reason we think they're let go is just the fact that we're happy that they're no longer part of Star Wars, because it was such a terrible end in the Game of Thrones, and... Not even that Star Wars and Disney haven't even had the best relationships. The Han Solo movie, eh. This last Star Wars 8 movie, eh. So do you really want to take a gamble on people that just ruined one of the best shows that ever happened? I don't think they were. So they made it seem like they were busy, but I feel like they got dropped. So you let me know in the comments, what do you think? Do you think Dave and Dave, they're just actually too busy to work on Star Wars? Or do you think they were mutually agreed to let go, or do, were they just dropped? Because I think they were just dropped, personally. No one wants to sign on someone like that. In the movie industry, in any world, you make one big mistake, that could be with you for the rest of your life. I know that sucks, but that's the reality of that industry. So let this be a lesson to all of you. Do not half-ass the greatest thing in the world just to go on to your next venture, because that next venture may not even be there. So Solange is all over the internet this weekend. And what for normally is a very private affair, it became very public for her. Solange divorced with her five-year husband, Alan Ferguson. You know, like I said, normally divorces aren't big news, but people led to speculation that she cheated on him with her manager. And being as Solange was the one that attacked Jay-Z in the elevator many years ago when he cheated on Beyonce, internet heard her cheating they ran with it and the reason they ran with it or even drew these conclusions was from this instagram post let me read it to you the past two years have brought me more physical and spiritual transition and evolution than ever before my body left me with no choice but to listen and be still 
Within that stillness, I began my journey in comforting my worst enemy, fear. I've lived my best and worst moments in front of the lens and gaze of the world since I was a teenager. I've always tried to live in my truth no matter how ugly or full of love it is. I've also tried to carve out the space to protect my heart and my life as it unfolds, evolves, and changes. Eleven years ago, I met a phenomenal man who changed every existence of my life. Earlier this year, we separated in part ways. And though it ain't none nobody business, I find it necessary to protect the sacredness of my personal truth and to live in it fully, just as I have before and will continue to do. It is unfair to not have power of your own story as you shape and mold and rewrite it yourself. A nigga ain't perfect, but I'm leaning into the fear of the unknown and all the glory and power I know exists within God and the universe grace. May all your transitions, no matter how big or small, be kind to you and filled with incredible love and light. So from that post, people saw that my body left with no choice but to listen and be still. And they saw that as she cheated on her husband. Also, when that happened, there was another picture that surfaced and it was with Salon and her manager. Let me show it to you. So that happened, these pictures are everywhere. So Solange went to her Twitter to address this and now since deleted tweets, but I'm gonna read them to you. Yo, Jean Bogger is my former co-manager. Y'all gotta chill. I'm not about to be silenced into letting complete lies narrate my life. To take my words, my body left me with no choice but to listen and be still after speaking about my health journey which has already been painful enough, and turn it into an interpretation of unfaithfulness is just, wow. I hate to even give this energy, but I will not let something so untrue follow me when I've tried to lead my life in truth. I hope y'all spread this with the same conviction and energy that you did the false narrative. Much love. And she also responded to a fan saying, nah, 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 I laugh aloud. I had to say something today, but I thank y'all for the love and support. So with all this information, what do you guys think? Do you think Solange cheated on her husband with her manager? Because me personally, I don't. Solange, she's a very spiritual, she seems very genuine. I don't think she's the type of person that would. But maybe I'm just saying that because I actually really enjoy her music. But we don't know who they are as people. So I can see both sides. But her addressing it like she did, I don't really think she did it. But you let me know in the comments. Do you think she did? So this last one isn't as big as everything, but it was really talked about. Meek Mill, he lost $10,000 last week, and he had a really good Samaritan named Alex turn that money in. And where everyone started talking about was, why the hell did Alex turn in this money? He fumbled the damn bag, and I'm going to have to agree with the public opinion that he fumbled the damn bag. See, Meek Mill, he's a millionaire. You, Alex, you're a normal Joe. 10000 to Meek Mill, he ain't going to lose sleep over it. 10000 to you, that's going to give you some nice comfortability. That's going to give you a nice savings for a little bit. And you just went and turned that right back into me. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a person of good energy, good karma. You do good things. I'm a person, someone loses their wallet. They lose their cell phone. I turn it in because I want that to happen to me. Hell, I lost my wallet two weeks ago. Someone turned it into lost and found and I was able to get it back. But everyone has their moral compass of, I'm willing to go this far, I'm willing to go this far, or they draw the line. And for me, I draw the line at $10,000. If I found that money, meat mill, you would not have been getting it back. That would have been in my pocket, put in my savings, and taken them to the sunset. So you let me know in the comment section, would you have pocketed the 10,000 or would you have been a good Samaritan like Alex? Because you already know how I feel about it. I'm keeping that, I'm putting it into my savings and I'm enjoying it. Meek Mill ain't losing no sleep over no 10K. <clears throat> so yeah, this is mostly what I wanted to talk about this week. RIP John Witherspoon again. Let me know in the comment section. Dave and Dave, do you think they actually are too busy or were they let go or fired? Also, Salon, do you think she cheated on her husband or was this all just speculation from us Instagram posts? Meek Mill, do you keep that money or do you turn it in like a good person? And so once again, if you enjoyed this shirt, I'm going to leave my friend's 
website in the comment description. He releases a lot of anime content. He does it seasonally. He's going to be coming out with some hoodies and things soon, so check it out. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, like, comment, share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it. This is Chris Chris. I'm out this motherfucker.